My name is John Cavalletti. My name is Matthew Morrison. My name is Casey Levine. My name is Matthew Post. And we all share a couple of things in common. Every weekday, usually before sunrise, we get up. Every weekday at 7.50, we get on the bus and we go to school. And every weekday from 8.15 to 2.45, we get to experience the results of an education system that isn't working. The impact of this affects everyone. And this is a problem whose solution cannot be delayed any longer. Like any problem, it has a source. And we believe that to be the law entitled No Child Left Behind. I'm a fifth grade teacher at Brookgrove Elementary School in Montgomery County Public Schools. I'm Gail West. I'm the principal at Brookgrove Elementary School in Olney, Maryland. I am a principal at a middle school in Olney, Maryland, Farquhar Middle School. No Child Left Behind was a law enacted in 2001 um, by the Bush administration. It was instituted with the hopes of getting all the states, all the students to meet a high level of expectation. It, it imposed a level of accountability that wasn't there before between states because in the past everyone was able to do what they wanted and so now there was standardized tests that were introduced so that they could benchmark and measure each state um, against each other. So it was put in place and with the concept that no child should be left behind, that there were children who were not being successful. There were some students doing very well and there were other students that were not doing well. And the idea was to level the playing field and get all the students to reach a high level. I think in, in theory it was a good idea. The good part of the bill was that it did uncover that there were students that were not uh, meeting expectations. We made underachieving states rethink how they were teaching and assessing students. The negative part was that we're not all the same, children are, are different, each school is different, and instead of measuring progress it gave us a target that everyone had to meet. You know, if you weren't meeting standard, according to the standardized test, there was this idea of being in trouble and having um, actions taken against schools to ensure that they were doing better within that testing environment. Um, I think where it got lost in translation a little bit and with what's been difficult for us is that there's this overriding um, feeling that we have to teach to a test. What happened was the test sort of started to drive instruction. And so it creates this level of anxiety for schools and for teachers. Um, and so it kind of gets away from doing what we want to do to promote critical thinking skills and what's good for our kids because we feel combined in a box. Confined in a box, I'm sorry. No child left behind had some serious flaws that are hurting our children instead of helping. The standards that were being set were more about NCLB compliance than really preparing children for where they need to be for success after high school. Standards and accountability, closing the achievement gap. We've got to stay focused on those goals, but we've got to do it in a way that doesn't force teachers to teach to the test or encourage schools to lower their standards to avoid being labeled as failures. This year, a huge 48% of schools failed to reach AYP goals, and this can be credited to the overwhelming expected AYP set in states, some now up to even 100%. No Child Left Behind does nothing but heighten the pressure to perform well on high-risk standardized tests that may be linked to the concerning number of cheating scandals. There were at least 1,610 cases of standardized score manipulation in only six states between 2009 and 2010. But No Child Left Behind is certainly not all bad. Increased accountability for minorities has been a huge success of the law. In reading and math, African American students score an average of 34 points higher than they did in 1973 before the law was passed. But while funding for No Child Left Behind has increased 73% since when the bill was enacted, student achievement has remained relatively flat. Ideally, what I would love to see is 
that I would be allowed to submit my plan to the state or to the county to say, at Farquhar Middle School, based on our needs, we are doing X, Y, and Z. And then to be able to show growth over time in that area so that it's not the state saying, here are the benchmarks, but that principals are able to create plans that work for their kids because we have such unique um, populations within each school that you can't do one cookie cutter um, test. They need realistic goals. And I think they have changed those goals where they're gonna, they expect improvement each year in all the subgroups, but that not everybody has to be at 100% proficiency by a certain date. So what I prefer to see is a, a measure that measures progress. Your students started here, each of, and this is where they ended up. And then you can put things in place to see along the way. That's what I prefer to see. You know, working on a project and, and completing a task um, or a project is a much better indication of your knowledge and skills, and it gives kids an opportunity to approach the subject in different ways than simply memorizing and regurgitating. We're going to let states, schools, and teachers come up with innovative ways to give our children the skills they need to compete for the jobs of the future. Because what works in Rhode Island may not be the same thing that works in Tennessee, but every student should have the same opportunity to learn and grow no matter what state they live in. No Child Left Behind is the route to a problem that needs fixing. What Congress does now to impact the education laws will shape our country's future. Because Good education for children impacts everyone. The reform of No Child Left Behind is without a doubt the most important issue that faces Congress in 2014.